Gumi Community Day is almost here in Pokemon Go, and in this video I will be going through all of the event details, I'll also be going through some tips including how to get as much Stardust and as many shiny Pokemon as possible, and I'll go through Gudra's meta relevance and 100% IVs. So the event takes place on Sunday June 9th between 2pm and 5pm local time. Gumi will be appearing more frequently in the wild, and the shiny rate will be increased from 1 in 512 to 1 in 25 during this time, so this is really the best chance to get the shiny family and it is a pretty nice shiny family as well so it's definitely worth picking up. The bonuses for the event will be 3 times catch Stardust, 2 times catch Candy, 2 times chance for Candy XL when catching Pokemon, Lures and Incense will be lasting for 3 hours excluding daily incense, you will get 5 snapshot photobomb encounters with Gumi, you'll get 1 extra special trade for a maximum of 3 for the day and all trades made will require 50% less Stardust. You can evolve Gumi's evolution Sligu to get a Gudra that knows the electric type charged attack Thunder Punch. This move has 45 power in gyms and raids and it has 55 power in trainer battles. I will be going through how good Gudra is in Pokemon Go later on in the video so stay tuned for that. So after the event ends from 5pm till 10pm on the day there will be 4 star in person Sligu raids that upon completion will cause Gumi to appear around the host gym for 30 minutes. These Gumi will have the same boosted community day shiny rates of 1 in 25. Remember these Sligu raids are in person only so they can only be joined using the free orange raid passes or the premium green battle passes, remote raid passes will not work for these raids. You will get a free timed research that will reward you with a rainy lure module that you can use to evolve Sligu into Gudra. This research will be available between 2pm and 10pm on the day. Also if it does happen to be raining where you're playing then you can evolve Sligu into Gudra without using a rainy lure module. There will be two event bundles available in the in-game shop. For 13 50 poker coins you can get 50 ultra balls, 5 super incubators, 1 elite charge tm and 5 lucky eggs. For 480 poker coins you can get 30 ultra balls, 1 incense, 3 super incubators and 1 lure module. There will also be a bundle on the web store for $5 that will get you 10 ultra balls, 1 elite charge tm and 1 special research story ticket. There will also be the $1 special research available in the shop. This generally gets you a couple of premium items like a rocket radar and an incense etc and you'll get encounters with the Gumi family as well. And lastly there will be event themed stickers that can be obtained by spinning poker stops, opening gifts and for purchase in the in-game shop. So that's it for the details, let's have a look at some tips that can help you make the most of this event. So with there being 3 times catch Stardust during this event, it will be a great time to use star pieces to get a total of 4.5 times Stardust, meaning you will get 450 Stardust per Gumi catch. Also if you do happen to have any Stardust boosted Pokemon in your field research stack that you have been waiting to catch during an event with a Stardust bonus, this will be pretty much the best time to do it. I do recommend connecting an auto catching device like a Pokemon Go Plus Plus and then go through your research stack whilst your auto catcher works in the background and catch all those Pokemon. If you have the resources to do so, I would also recommend using Origin Dialga's Roar of Time Adventure Effect to extend your star pieces duration during the event. Alternatively, you could use Origin Palkia's Spatial Rend Adventure Effect to extend the Pokemon encounter radius so you can catch more in a given area. Also remember to quick catch whenever you can so you can catch as many Gumi as quickly as possible to get as much Stardust as you can possibly get. Using an Incense is also worth doing because not only will it last for 3 hours, but it will help keep the flow of the Pokemon you encounter more consistent, especially especially if you walk through areas with low spawns. This means you'll keep getting consistent XP in Stardust. Also, if you do use multiple incense whilst Community Day is on, you can add extra 3 hours to your incense per incense used, so it's definitely worth doing this if you're going to be playing Pokemon Go after the event ends. I would also recommend doing any Pokestop showcases that you do see, because even if you don't rank highly, you will get some XP in Stardust just for taking part. And if you do happen to rank highly, you could get some premium items. So with the Slumbering Sands event going on at the same time, time as Gumi Community Day, the 2 times catch XP from that event might also be active during Gumi Community Day, and if so that does mean using a lucky egg would also be advisable to get more XP whilst you're out grinding Stardust. For the 2 times catch candy you can use Pinat Berries to further increase your candy gains, and you can mega evolve a Pokemon of the same type as the Pokemon you're catching to increase the amount of candy, candy XL and XP you get per catch. So as Gumi is a dragon type you can mega evolve Charizard, Ampharos, Sceptile, Altaria, 
Salamence, Latios, Latias, Rayquaza or Garchomp to get these bonuses. Also it's good to note that you will get more candy, candy XL and XP by mega evolving a Pokemon that is at the max mega level so worth doing that if you can. And if you haven't evolved your Poipole into Naganardle yet then I highly recommend making Poipole your buddy at the start of this event because you do need to catch 20 Dragon type Pokemon whilst Poipole is your buddy as part of its evolution requirements. And this will be really easy to get with Gumi being a Dragon type. With the level 49 requirements of needing 35 Platinum Medals and the fact that Gumi is a Dragon type Pokemon, it is a great chance for you to work on your Platinum Dragon Tamer Medal, especially as it is one of the harder type medals to get to Platinum because Dragon types are generally quite rare. It might also be worth doing a Sligu Raid if you are looking to progress your Rising Star Platinum Medal or if you want to progress your Champion Medal. It's worth doing some trading during this event because you do get an extra special trade for the day and another one for the seasonal bonus as well so you will get a maximum of 3 for the day and you get a 50% Stardust discount as well. So there are a lot of reasons for trading not only to get lucky Pokemon and to reroll IVs but also because trading will help you with your Platinum Gentleman Medal and even your Platinum Pilot Medal if there is some decent distance between the areas that the Pokemon were caught in. Additionally if you do trade Pokemon that are caught far away from each other you will get more candy and a higher chance of Candy XL. Three hour lure modules are a great way to get your Picnic a Platinum Medal. It's always a good idea to put down some lure modules in highly populated areas on Community Day when there are more people out playing and that means you'll get this one done pretty quickly. The five snapshot photobomb encounters with Gumi will help you towards getting your Platinum Cameraman Medal. And with all of the Gumi spawning and all of the candy you'll get from this event, it might be worth evolving some Gumi to work on your Platinum Scientist Medal if you want to get that one. And as the field research is always easy to do on Community Day, it's usually you just catch three of the featured Pokemon, it can be very helpful with getting your Platinum Pokemon Ranger Medal. With there being event themed showcases available, it's a good time to be out there trying to win these to work on your Platinum Showcases Star Medal. Especially as when you get this medal, you will get an encounter with PhD Pikachu, and this is the only way to get it in the game so far. So for preparation for Community Day, if you live in an area with few Pokestops, I would recommend opening the max amount of gifts you can from your friends each day leading up to the event. It's also worth noting that item storage upgrade should be a priority for your poker coins especially if you live in an area with few poker stops because you can store more and you won't need to refill all your items at poker stops as often. With that said how good is Gudra in Pokemon Go and what are the perfect PvP IVs? So for the capped CP leagues like the Great League and the Ultra League, you more often than not want to have a general IV spread of low attack and high defense and high HP. This is because out of the three stats, attack, defense and HP, attack increases the CP or the combat power of the Pokemon the most. So if you have a higher attack IV, the CP of the Pokemon will be higher. And if you have a lower attack IV, the CP of the Pokemon will be lower. With a lower CP, you will be able to power up your Pokemon more before reaching the Battle League CP cap. This means that the defense and the HP of the Pokemon will be increased higher and they will be able to stay alive longer and potentially land more attacks. This is the general case for Pokemon that have a max CP that is above the CP cap of a league. However, if for example you have a Pokemon that maxes out at 2470 CP and you want to use it in the Ultra League with a CP cap of 2500, you would want to try and get the 15 15 15 IVs so it could have a CP that is as close to the CP cap of that league as possible. Additionally, in the Master League there is no CP cap so the 100% IV or the 15 1515 15, IV is always the target. Gudra is actually a strong Pokemon in each of the three main Go Battle Leagues. It is currently ranked 25 in the Great League with 114 14, 14 IVs. It's ranked 37 in the Ultra League with 0 12 12 IVs. And in the Master League, it is currently ranked 28 with 15 15 15 IVs. So Gudra will be getting Thunder Punch as its community day move, and it won't add a lot to Gudra, but it will give it some extra coverage. However, it is probably worth evolving into Gudra on the day to get Thunder Punch just in case it turns out to be the better option over Power Whip. When it comes to raid attacking, Gudra doesn't really have any meta relevance, but if you are a new player and you have no dragon type attackers, you could potentially use it, especially with the amount of candy that you will get for it on Community Day, but I wouldn't invest a lot of Stardust into it for raid attacking for long term. And with that said, for the Master League in particular, you will be looking for 100% IV Gumi, so what are the CP values for the 100% IV that you could look out for? 
So from research, 100% IV Gumi will have the CP value of 418. From the wild, there are many CP values that could indicate 100% IVs depending on the level of the Pokemon that you encounter. But due to the fact that the max level a Pokemon can be in the wild without a weather boost is 30, this means that 100% IV max level non weather boosted Gumi will have the CP value of 836. And if weather boosted, the wild encounters can go to level 35. So 100% IV max level weather boosted Gumi will have 906 CP in windy weather. For the four star Sligu raids, the 100% IV CP values will be 1164 and 1454 boosted in windy weather. And if you want to know the 100% IV CP values for Gumi at other levels in the wild, they can be found on this CP chart. In the left column is the level of the Pokemon and in the right column is the corresponding 100% IV CP value at that level. If you want to know what are the best Pokemon to power up in Pokemon Go, then I recommend checking out this video next.